Hello YouTube! I am so excited to finally be back for another video. I know it's been forever since the last one. I think my last one was at the end of March. But as you uh, may perhaps have guessed, the absence is entirely due to the fact that after months and months and months of lockdowns and restrictions in the UK, I could finally return to the day job of, of course, playing concerts and um, running a concert series, festivals and, and of course, teaching my uh, teaching all my lovely students. So I apologize for the absence, but uh, I very much enjoy getting all your questions and um, your comments. Please do keep them coming. I always try to respond as quickly as I can. Now, to get back into the game, I thought today we would talk with you about something at the moment, I think quite topical. We've just had Christmas and um, most of us, and that includes myself, probably won't have played the cello for at least a few days. And of course, whenever you've had a bit of a break like that, you come back to it and everything feels a little bit yucky, right? So I thought today I would share with you what I myself do to um, get back into proper playing shape. Now, of course, each player will have their own way of um, getting back into, into shape. But for me, what my little program entails is really reconditioning and sort of reawakening each of the fundamental, the most fundamental component parts that, in my opinion, go into playing the cello and playing the cello well. First and foremost, of course, that starts with good setup and good posture. Without that, everything else is going to be really difficult to achieve. So always, I try to spend a little bit of time really checking that my, my setup is up to scratch. And that, of course, you know, means I have to check how I, how I sit, really that, you know, it's not, everything here should be nice and, and nice and square, you know feet on the ground, hips and shoulders really looking straight ahead. Make sure that when you sit down, you are not already a little bit twisted. Most biggest danger for cellists always twisting down here and ending up with a retracted shoulder. We don't want that. So nice and upright, really strong core. Yeah. And um, making sure the cello really just sort of gently leans against you and you gently lean against the cello so it should never push you push you backwards like that so make sure you really take a couple of minutes really going over that and, and checking that yeah and as you can see my cello is always sort of the a string always comes up a little bit turned inwards a little bit like that and that also helps to maintain good posture now once I've done that, what comes next? And that's, of course, my right arm. Without the bow, as you can probably, as you know now from all of my other videos, I always start with the right arm and making sure everything there is working as it should do, because without that, the rest is pretty futile. Yeah, so we check again that we have a nice, nice relaxed bow hold. And first of all, I'm going to be spending a few minutes with each with each of the parts of my arm the upper arm and the lower arm very 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 important to really always get back to those fundamentals because therein really lies a secret to you know a nice a nice strong um right hand so i'm going to first of all spend a little bit of time uh playing half bows only using the lower half of the bow and of course in order to do that I need the upper part of my arm yeah so you can see here how my upper arm goes out and it comes back in very important at that point make sure that the movement gets initiated from up here don't start pulling with your hand and make the arm follow no, the movement starts up here. Very important. Try that on all the different strings. While I do that, I always 
always like to sort of scan my body for any kind of tension and some good places to check your facial muscles the moment you feel that anything in your face is a little bit tense that's already a little bit of an alarm signal yeah so check whether while you're doing that you can talk comfortably and another place i like to check usually is my feet because <laughs> those also tend to go a little bit like that if you're tense so Check those out while you're doing it. You're trying to get really to a place of freedom here. Arm going, going out, coming back in. The rest of the body stays totally relaxed. And really the point where everything kind of comes from is what over the course of 2021 i have come to term the the vaccine spot the one up here in your arm where the, where the jab goes in yeah if you think of that spot that's where the movement should start there you go so i would usually be doing that for a few minutes i'm not going to tell you exactly how long for because it, it depends how long it takes you to get to that feeling of really feeling comfortable and feeling free. Yeah, so now we're going to be doing the same idea in the upper half of the bow. And of course, here, as usual, we will be using our lower arm. So the upper arm now stays here. It's nice and relaxed. Note that I'm not lifting it. It's really hanging in this position. And now I'm hinging from the elbow it should feel like when you're on the down bow you're pulling against resistance and the up bow should almost come back by itself so you work on the down comes back by itself pull on the down comes back by itself again different strings note that when i go from the d to the a there is no notable change in arm level here. Yeah? In fact, what I like to do when I go on the A, I start on the D and then I just tip my hand enough so I get onto the A string. <laughs> to the point where everything feels very, very smooth. It shouldn't, shouldn't feel in any way sort of... Um, you know, everything should feel like a like a really well-oiled machine. That's the best way I can explain it, yeah? So if you feel it could do with a little bit of WD-40, then it obviously means you haven't haven't quite relaxed enough. So as I said before on the downboard, always scan for tension. Once we've done the two individual parts, we're going to try and put them together. And initially, I always do it like that. I go to do the whole range of my, my upper arm, little stop, change over there. So you end up with a sort of four part bowing. Upper arm, change to lower arm, lower arm, change to upper arm. And eventually you sort of make the, the rest shorter and shorter and shorter to the point where you know how it feels to connect. getting loads and loads and loads and loads of resonance out of the instrument yeah so you can just hear it just i'm allowing the cello what it wants to do which is to vibrate and to to sing yeah so once we've got that feeling we have already done a lot trust me if you have gotten to that point, you've already done a really, really, really good chunk of work and you are already most of the way, most of the way there. Then, of course, if you like, you can also um, add in a couple of minutes of working on crossings as well. And you can really make up the patterns as you as you like. There is only one stipulation with a crossing and you want them to be the, the movements to be as minimal as possible always and you want them to be as well prepared as possible so for instance if i show you just a slur g to d and back you can see that i'm using the entire 
intensity of the first note to go closer and closer and closer to the new string so that there is never a point where the bow kind of does that everything is very 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 gradual i always describe it a little bit like when you're driving down the motorway or as it's called in america the highway uh when you're changing lanes you always do it across a long distance very 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 gradually you know you don't just do that with a wheel so and that's very much the same with a boat imagine you're changing lanes here and you do it very very gradually so <laughs> sure to try and get everything to be to feel as smooth as you can possibly get it okay so now that takes me to my my next um, component part and um, of course that is the left arm notice I'm saying the left arm rather than the left hand yeah always very important that we're playing with our we're playing with our whole arm not just not just with a hand and of course uh i couldn't possibly talk about the left um and the left arm left hand fingers um whatever without also talking about conditioning these our ears they are perhaps the most underappreciated player in all of that yeah because our left hand is only ever as precise as our ears. So my very very first left hand warm-up uh, serves two purposes and the first one is to establish a really good hand shape and the second one is to straight away get my ears involved and all we're going to do is we're going to play octaves using the open string, open string, G, fourth finger, looking for in the left hand I'm the reason I'm starting on the false uh, on the false finger is in order to get a really really good hand shape you need to build it from the false finger backwards not from the first finger upwards because you're going to end up with something like that yeah so we're going to start from the shortest one from the false finger look I have a really nice c shape here yeah you already know that from plenty of my my other videos so we've got that so that's straight away give me the shape look how long the arm is there is no twist or bend anywhere here yeah so arm out fold in half c shape onto the string and now we get these involved the ears so you play your open string stop wait and pitch to pitch the octave then I strongly suggest you spend a good deal of time listening to the beginning of Somewhere Over the Rainbow and that will you will forever remember the the interval of an octave right so now one more time always hand down shape strings obviously you can do it in three different combinations C. and so on and so forth now why why is it so important to to straight away uh go for absolutely pinpoint 100% um, perfect intonation. A, um, the longer, every time you just, you know, sort of 
think near enough is good enough or you let things slide a little bit the more your ear starts to think that that is okay it just the ear is very much a um it's like a, a measuring device yeah it's like a gauge and it very much depends on how you calibrate it if you um if you allow your ear to think that you know that's all right, 95% is all right then after a while the ear will think 95% is all right if however you're really going every time for to for total precision you'll find that your ear will become so so keenly aware that your entire level of intonation will get a lot lot better when you play and there is no better time than really right from the very start when you get back into shape to introduce that and i also think it's extremely important psychologically because let's face it usually we are always aware if something is sort of not a hundred percent deep down we know it's not a hundred percent yeah and there is always something you know our relationship with our playing is already if you if you feel that something is always sort of never quite clean it always leaves a sort of slightly bad taste so really really right from the word go uh when you when you restart start playing go for 100 percent precision and you know what that might take a little while to get there yeah and one tip if you find it difficult make the break between the notes longer so longer now and it showed me there was still a tiny little bit of imprecision there and it's very simple the longer the break the more obvious it's going to be afterwards if the note isn't 100 percent so that exercise you can then also do uh, in different positions for instance you can do the same for instance with um fourth position mm. yeah you can also do with the first finger here for instance mm. and lots and lots of different positions um the same notes like used here you can do with different fingers yeah so you you make it up it's really entirely up to you how uh, little or how much time you want to uh, to spend on that okay so now we have created um a shape by doing that to get my individual fingers warmed up and sort of back into the habit of lifting and, and dropping and really here you can make up as many patterns as you like within one position so I'm going to start with just four three two one <laughs> upper arm lower arm whether that's actually still happening in the way it should you might be surprised so and here also try to straight away pay attention to intonation do do the notes individually occasionally with gaps instance is that your um you especially when you're doing four three two one that your third finger isn't high enough and that your second and third finger are too close together so really check for that as well and again by doing that right at the start when you're getting back into it you're already you know you're putting some money in the bank so <laughs> man you can pick lots and lots of different exercises for that and you can make them make them up as you go along only thing to always check do you still have the c shape or have the thumb done anything 
like that in which case correct it straight away yeah and again you can also do all of these exercises in different uh, positions next um if you are already doing uh, vibrato that's a point where i like to um uh, my, my fingers are a little bit warmer and now i want to um do something involving a little bit of friction because that actually also really builds the calluses on our fingers and that's really important for me as well so um if you have watched my uh, vibrato video, you will know the whole exercise. And so on and so forth. If you don't know it yet, take a look at my, um, my uh, how to learn vibrato video. But I will basically at this point do a quick run through of the entire process. You know, every finger, first to fourth position, first to third position, first to second semitone and so on and so forth uh why because a it gets my arm back to to learning the basic vibrato movement but also as i said it, it really puts a lot of friction uh um, between here the fingers and the string and it rebuilds your your callus so once i've done that i will usually opt to either third or fourth position and just vibrate long notes so right arm uh, is the arm still opening and closing in the nice four parts as you were doing it earlier check <laughs> capacity to throw the right arm movement off quite as much as vibrato does so make sure that that is not um is not uh, happening yeah and then you know again this depends on sort of how advanced you are another thing uh that's also quite good is to uh switch fingers more quickly so <laughs> extension without ever stopping the vibrato that's an exercise i will explain in another video at some point in uh in in detail but um those are all the things that you know get the right muscles back into into shape so now from our vibrato exercise already we have now gotten used to um you know some friction and to moving the arm up and down so to to finish this sort of you know this is just a very sort of basic program there are lots obviously lots and other, lots of other things you can do after that but those are for me the absolute sort of must-haves and of course uh we need to include some shifting into that because for shifting we need to reconnect with one specific part of our our left arm and of course that's the elbow because a shift is really nothing other than opening and closing the elbow yeah so that's really um the thing i want to i want to watch out for here really is and you you've heard me say this term probably hundreds of times in other videos the quality of movement yeah so we're going to you can take any combination of positions i'm going to start for you know the purpose of showing the exercise with something really basic first of all and we're just going to do the movement incredibly slowly so we're going to release the pressure on the string. Well, by the way, when I say release pressure, it does not mean taking the finger off the string. Yeah? You just stop pressing the string, string onto the fingerboard. And now we very gently open the elbow and very slowly and softly release. To start with, do it while the bow is stopped. So you can really take all the time in the world and look how carefully I open my arm. And by the way, that 
that's where our ear gets involved again yeah before we leave i need to know what my target note sounds like so pitch before you play if you like don't rush keep the bow going keep pulling you can make different combinations of fingering whichever ones you like um, when I do it with my students we usually decide in advance we pick two positions and uh, then we're going to do with almost every possible finger combination yeah you can decide third to fourth position and of course if you're more advanced make sure you do it going up um, as well so that's really sort of my last um component part which i'll spend time on the shifting and really spending time here it should just feel like you know the the elbow opening and closing it really should feel like a knife going through butter yeah there should be no resistance there should be no sort of jerkiness in the movement whatsoever it should just feel really 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 soft and once you've done all of these things you should theoretically already feel a little bit more back on it because certainly it will have refocused your your mind on all the important things and that's a point you know, when then I think you're in the shape too, that's when I'll start playing, uh, I don't know, scales or, um, you know, studies or start working on, on a repertoire again. But, you know, even the scale actually demands a lot of different processes, which if you haven't thought about each of them individually, are actually quite, quite complex to all, to all do right at the, at the same time. Yeah, so uh, those are just some of my thoughts on um, on certainly what I've been um, doing today after after Christmas to uh, to get back into shape. And as always, uh, please uh, send me your uh, your comments, your uh, questions. Um, as I said, I always really like uh, getting those, and I always try to try to respond as quickly as I can. And of course, uh, if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and uh, smash that like button. And if you would like to, uh, you know, go through any of these in much more in more depth with me, please feel free to get in touch um, with me through uh, through my website and um, and we'll see whether we can, can book you in for a lesson. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And I promise it won't be nine months again. See you soon.